All right, to add to the fun, I'm gonna take the camshafts off, the intake and exhaust. That way I can reinstall them and I know that they're gonna be installed correctly. I don't want the machine shop doing that when I send the head out to the machine shop. So if I look, I can see I have E1 here and I have A1 here. E is not exhaust. Remember, E is ein for intake. So they're all labeled E1, E2, E3, E4, E5, E6, E7. So I can take these bearing caps off and not worry about how they go back on. I just got to make sure that I'm facing the right way. So passenger side, driver side, and I can read the E1 from the passenger side. Same thing here, A1, A2, A3. They have to be facing that way. You don't want to flip them around the wrong way when you put this back together. You see I got my timing chain hooked up so I don't have to worry about skipping a, getting the chain moved by like a tooth down on the bottom. It's always good to keep some tension on there, but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to take these camshafts out. I have to take off my timing tool. So let's loosen that up, move that out of the way. Take this off. So you can't take the camshafts off at top dead center. We actually have to be 30 degrees off of top dead center where you can damage something. Okay, to take the camshaft out, I have to take my timing tool out, which I've done. And now I have to rotate the engine 30 degrees. So you gotta think straight up and straight sideways is 90. So about right past the uh, reservoir for the power steering should be the 30 degrees that I need. And you can see my chains up out of the way. So it should just click over. See, there's my chain moving. And I'm just gonna go 30 degrees. And now it's safe for me to remove the camshafts. All right, word of caution. If you don't have the special tool, you can loosen them slowly across each one and walk it off very, very slowly because this is under tension. You could crack your camshaft. Most of the time, you're perfectly fine and they don't crack. So just take your time and just release them about the same amount. But I do have the special tool. So this is the special tool right here. It goes into the spark plug hole and it bolts down to the spark plug threads. Man, almost dropped the GoPro, I snagged it out of midair. All right, so using an adjustable wrench, I have that installed. And basically this is just a cam that puts pressure onto, if you can feel where it catches, onto the camshaft nice and even. Now I can release all of my bolts at the same time and then release the camshaft all smoothly in one motion because it's all held down in multiple spots. And then there's no chance of breaking that camshaft. All right, so I'm gonna get those bearing caps off. All right, so all of those are off. And now I can release my cam. And it just, brushed they're off. It's funny how, because this is how you reinstall it too. I need to be a farther angle because the release is so high. You can see how much it raises. Let's see if I can show you. Look at that, Look how much that comes up. That's why you have to be careful. You can see the tension is all the way pretty high on these studs. So you have to be very careful you don't strip those out. All right, let's get this out of the way. And now I can take all of my bearing caps off. It's always good to take a look at them, make sure there isn't any unusual scoring on the cap or on the cam. And I'm just going to pop all these caps off. And here's my camshaft right here. Put that into a safe spot. All right, so to take the rail off, you do pop it up, but I don't have the little suction cup. So all of my 
uh, hydraulic valve actuators are going to fall out the bottom. And usually you need a little suction cup tool to push them in and then the suction cup holds them. Hopefully I can get the suction cup tool at work or else it is very difficult to actually get these all to line up. So I can flip this over now and put them back in, in the order that they came out. You can see right here how you kind of build them. And right, the cam pushes on these hydraulic valve actuators which presses on top of the valves. And I have seen these go bad. They can cause a misfire if you have a binding hydraulic valve actuator. Ideally, you want them to all go back in the same location. All right, so now that's built like that. I'm gonna put that into a clean area so it doesn't get dirty. All right, here we go, getting close. These studs right here, which sometimes these actually can fail when the engine overheats, so hopefully not. I don't know if these can be replaced separately or you'd have to have something machined um, that would work that's the same length. Hopefully I won't have a problem when I retorque the camshaft down. The heat can really sometimes do a number on the middle. So let's switch over and take off the exhaust camshaft now. Alright, we're going to put our tool in. All right, not cylinder one, but we want it two, here's three, four, and five, so two and five for this tool. What tool number is this? So same thing. Need to apply pressure uh, evenly on my camshaft. All right, exhaust cam. I already took out the 11 millimeters and now I have to release the tension on the camshaft. That's good. Now I'll take off my tensioning tool. Take these off first. There we go. And take off my exhaust camshaft. And then the same thing for the rail. And I just need a screwdriver. There we go. And the same thing. If I'm careful, maybe I can keep some of these in. There they go. <laughs> there they all go. She have to come up so high. One stayed. All right, so let's rebuild these. The oil smells a little burnt on the exhaust side. When these are going back together, you want to use a little bit of oil just to lubricate everything. There we go. All right, that's the exhaust side. Well, there we go. We got just the bare head here, no intake or exhaust cam. We can see our valve springs, and we're about ready to take off the cylinder head. So I have to take the cylinder head bolts off and I have to take uh, just this holder off right here, and then it's gonna be ready to come off. So if you were testing this engine, typically with an overheat, what we're supposed to do is replace the head bolts and retorque them to see if the threads pull out, the, you know, the block material will actually pull out with the threads. Now, that doesn't really make sense. I already know this engine is compromised. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them apart take all these head bolts out we're gonna take the head off and then we do have some more tests we have to do to make sure that the block is good if the block is not good that's a bad thing because then it's an engine replacement and I need to find 
and M54 with some low miles and you know you don't know what you're gonna get um, so hopefully I'll be able to repair this because overall this engines in really good shape it's very clean as long as it is repairable